Hi, good day and welcome to CSEC Human and Social Biology with Mr. Wilson. Life and Environment Explained. Today we are going to be looking at microbes. But before we get into the lesson, I'd like to say a big thank you to these persons. Miss Bryce from Kellett's High School. Uh, Miss Berwick from Porous High School. Miss A over there from Brownstone for subscribing to the channel. We continue to do our best to ensure that we reach our students wherever they are despite the pandemic i want to say a big shout out to those persons in saint mary who are locked into the channel uh some persons from kingston tarrant high school family i want to say a big up to them as well they have been locked into the channel we have some friends from trinidad and tobago we're seeing you and we really appreciate the fact that you're here with us some friends out of the usa we do appreciate your presence as well and those from england we continue to do our best to see how we can reach our nation's children. I want you to check out Mr. Chen's which is a student. I want you to check out Mr. Chen. Here is Mr. Chen. Mr. Chen teaching. He is doing well, providing agriculture content from grade 7 to 11. And he has some past paper out there that should be able to help you. Now, if you have not subscribed as yet, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell when you do also please be reminded to like share and of course leave a comment at the end of watching the lesson thank you very much again and let's jump right into the lesson it's life and environment explained and we are definitely going to be looking at microbes as it pertains to the human and social biology syllabus so let's look at the objectives for the day. We want to draw and compare the structures of a generalized microbe. And we want to compare that to a plant and the animal cell. We also want to identify economic importance of microbes. It's very important that we have a good appreciation as to why we're studying what we're studying. Hence, we want to look at the economic importance there. We want to explain some key words that you would find in your exam or in the exam questions as so you will be able to answer your questions without any major delay you would have been pretty familiar as to how these terms are used let's hop on into the lesson so we want to look at compare to compare you're supposed to know similarity or dissimilarity between things place etc so you want to make sure that you understand the difference probably between a male and a female is probably a good place to start and a pretty simple example to use you would of course understand that the reproductive organs they are way way different it's not pr probably the best thing to talk about the length of the air because male and female they do have in some cases the same length air we want to examine and that means to inspect or to look at person or thing thoroughly in order to determine their nature pretty much your makeup functionality or condition so you are examining something uh, this is an easy one one will recall going to the doctor and the doctor would have performed an examination he's trying to find out what is happening can you say if this area is hurting um how do you feel that type of thing so he's trying to figure out what's your condition you're saying that you're sick so of course you would understand this term to examine you want to also be able to explain and to explain means that you're going to reveal relevant facts relevant facts that's the key word here relevant facts which bring greater clarity to a subject and a subject here mean whatever thing you are talking about whatever thing you wish to explain that in this case would have been considered the subject so with those words are put forward we can jump right into the lesson and definitely we are going to be looking at some more words at the end of the lesson we are going to be doing these words over and over and over again until we have a good grasp of these words all right microbes microbes are small organisms most persons would be able to say that most of which are responsible for disease 
Of course, persons would also say that. We can remember if you're from the Caribbean, Chick V, Zik V, you can talk about AIDS, you can talk about the virus that is now the COVID-19. And we could go on and on and on without any itch. Now, except for a few fungi that are a part of this group, all others belong to the kingdoms prokaryote, protoctista, and virus. We have looked at this before for those persons who were watching our earlier publication when we were just carrying some biology content. We ventilated prokaryotic organisms and we ventilated at the time eukaryotic organism and we said that eukaryotic organism at the time are referred to organism with a nucleus that is bounded by a membrane while a prokaryotic organism would not have had a nucleus bounded by a membrane and we looked at the protoctis we looked at the amoeba as an example and we have new to your hsb now we are looking at the fungi and we are looking at the virus we did not cover those when we looked at biology because they are not a part of the biology syllabus let's up and down now microbes this is very important to understand microbes because they have economic importance and we said that at the start it's very important to understand microbes because they have economic importance some of which are microbes are definitely going to be a part of your nitrogen cycle they are responsible for recycling nutrient and they are also responsible for disease and spoilage the farmers will complain about the spoilage of their crop which in most cases they can link directly to some form of pathogen or some form of microbe. Let's delve into the content with bacteria. Before we go any further with bacteria, remember bacteria is plural while bacterium is singular. Now bacteria are single-celled prokaryotic organisms that are found almost everywhere in the environment some live in extreme conditions of temperature and pressure they move using what is called a flagellum all right you might have heard that before when i talk about the flagellum i like to make reference to the sperm cell which itself has a flagellum which um, enhances its movement now, bacteria, they are not all harmful. That is very important to note. Bacteria, they are not all harmful. Some are useful and even live in the gut of animals and help with nitrogen fixation in plants. And you might be familiar with the term nitrosomonas. All right, that we will talk more about as we go along. Now, bacteria are also used for medicinal purpose so we spoke about bacteria they are not all bad they are also using medicine they are using industry for cheese did you know that cheese soy sauce vinegar and yogurt it is important to note most bacteria would be harmful like the gonococcus bacteria that causes gonorrhea now if you're listening to this content and you've ever heard the term gonorrhea and the term zoonosis zoonosis refers to disease that are transferred from animal to man so gonorrhea is a disease that is popular among dogs right so gonorrhea is one of those diseases that we're going to be looking at later when we look at disease in this syllabus now we're looking now at the generalized bacterium cell so it's a single cell we're looking at now all right, so the first thing we want to look at, we want to look at the plasmid. And the plasmid, of course, is a small piece of DNA, or there are small pieces of DNA. And you will recall that DNA is pretty much what carries genetic information. So remember again, the plasmid, there are small pieces of DNA. Look at the capsule. Uh, this is pretty unique when we look at cell. The capsule, this is a slimy covering that protects the bacteria. It's a slimy covering that protects the bacteria. Cell wall. 
we remember this from the plant cell. Now the cell wall here is similar to that of the plant cell and we looked at that a whole lot when we looked at the generalized structure of a plant cell there. The cell membrane, the cell membrane of course is typical for both plant and animal cell and it forms pretty much an envelope around the entire organelle. So the cell me membrane itself forms an entire ring one would say around the organism and we're looking at it if you're looking at my screen here my cursor is moving it's right here then we have the cytoplasm again we looked at the cytoplasm when we looked at plants and animal cell uh the cytoplasm we said it was a jelly-like substance and a site where a lot of reaction took place we also said that it's pretty much an inner portion of the cell and pretty much um, the organelles are suspended in this area of the cell. So the cytoplasm would be pretty much protecting the organelles inside of the cell from collision and damage. The nucleoid, remember, remember, this is a bacterium. So you would not have had a nucleus. What we have is called a nucleoid. And it's pretty much a coil thread or a coil of DNA strand, one would say, that control all activities in the cell. So remember, there's no nucleus as we would have said for plants and animal cells. Here we have what is called a nucleoid. All right? Good, good. We're moving on ribosomes of course ribosomes are important for protein synthesis if you were looking at the cells in our biology vi videos you would not have seen the ribosome because it was not required for us to uh, talk about it then then we come down now to the flagellum and the flagellum is this tail-like structure that whips this whip-like movement in order to propel the organism now, teachers might want to break at this point of the lesson to find out how well we have been doing. So I'm sure that your teachers will be giving you a little short, short quiz now to see how much you have garnered so far in the lesson. We will be back in a bit. Good! I hope you did well in that little quiz. We're now going to be looking at fungi. Now, fungi, they are single cell or multicellular eukaryotic organism. They are heterotrophic organisms that, unlike other organisms, they can reproduce sexually or asexually. So much have been said here. Multicellular or single cellular. All right. So multicellular, many cells, single, one eukaryotic suggests here that the nucleus is bounded by a membrane heterotrophic meaning that it depends on others for food so an heterotrophic organism will be depending on others for food then you would have had like what we call autotrophic like the plant which makes its own food and then another type of nutrition we could talk about we could talk about saprophytic right those organisms that are feeding and dead and decaying Organism. So three type of nutrition we looked at there. That was very quick, but we did it. Now, we said unlike other organisms, they can reproduce sexually or asexually. Two, all two big terms, terms that we're going to be using over and over again. So sexual, when we talk about sexual reproduction, we are talking about the fusion of the male and female gamete. So once it's sexual reproduction, let, let us do it here. Um, we're going to be having two parents while in asexual reproduction we're going to be having one parent one parent all right and the offspring they are usually identical to the parent when we have asexual reproduction we don't want to dive any further into sexual and asexual so let's just move along with the fungi now, fungi, they too, it's very important that we understand fungi. Now, they are very important in the cycling of nutrient and in the manufacturing industry. They may be very harmful 
to other organisms and may also be parasitic by nature so here we are showing you the good side of fungi and the bad side of fungi i tell i tell you something i don't know that there's anything that is totally good and i really don't know that there's anything that is totally bad and the fungi here is saying hey i'm not all totally bad i'm also good i am used in your manufacturing industries now you might have heard fungi fungus fungi fungus and you're wondering what's the difference well fungus is singular and fungi of course is plural very good now there are some fungi that you would have known or heard about or it might be new to you now now those that are causing harm some of the fungi that are causing harm. And if you are an agriculture student, you really want to know these. If you are an agriculture student, you really want to know these. And if you are from a farming community, this would also help. Remember that this content is suitable for anybody in the Caribbean that is doing this CSEC examination. So mildew, rust, scab, all these affect plants. But then you would have known about athletes foot, ringworm, and thrush in human. So there we showed you some that would have affected plants, and now we're showing you some that affects human. All right? I think we're doing pretty well so far. All right? Hope you're making your little jottings, and I'm not going too fast. But remember, if I'm going too fast, at any time you could ask your teacher to pause or to just play the video again, or you could play the video again, and then you could stop and do whatever you so desire and try as much as possible to see how you can test yourself to see how much you are retaining. Now, there are some fungi that we know. I mean, just about everyone would know these fungi. Um... Think about yeast. We use yeast in the production of bread. Of course, this respiration would cause the bread dough to rise, so we'd know that. We know about mold. Of course, you'd have found seen um, mold on the bread in the fridge or the piece of bread that you would have had for um, more than you should have. In most cases, there are some bread that if you have it for a day or two, um, it will be all filled with molds and then there are some that you will have it for a year and there is no mold Don't ask me why I really don't know but I have seen um, cases like that uh, Mushrooms we wouldn't know mushroom and remember mushroom is a very tricky Organism because there's one that we refer to as the toadstool that you'd find in pastures and so on and that one is somewhat um, toxic but there's also mushroom that is grown by the farmer for the dining table yeah we're eating fungus yeah mushroom it's a fungi now beautiful here your syllabus wants us to look at the structure of a fungi and here we have a nice diagram uh, with spores and spore case and hyphae and mycelium and we're going to be talking about that right here right now now fungi are made up of very fine thread-like structure called hyphae and here you have the hyphae these network here here they are all this here this network here they are referred to as hyphae h y p h a. Now, the organism feeds through the hyphae by growing on its food and absorbing the nutrients. So it would have been similar to you stepping on the floor. Hey, I'm not going to be having any dinner today because I'm a fungus. I'm just going to be stepping into my food. I'm going to absorb it through my feet. That type of thing. So the fungi tends to grow and that which it wants to consume and then of course it's going to break it down with some enzymes and all of that and ensure that um this useful substance is absorbed so they would absorb the nutrient so a fungi it simply grow on whatever it wants to consume and then it will break it down and absorb and here is a good reason why we're saying that the fungi is an ectotrophic organism because it relies on other organisms for food now it's important to know that the network of hyphae is called uh, mycelium and here we have in curly bracket right over here just look at your screen uh, curly brackets right here and you'll see all this group of hyphae we call them 
we call him mycelium m y c e l i u m mycelium so a group of ife is referred to as mycelium now it's very important to note as well that this organism can reproduce by its spores so here we have some spores leaving the spore case so it's like in a case in like a little pod and here we have some spores leaving some spores leaving right here and this is of course the spores case uh, this one is not so bad just one little spore leaving here but of course these are spores and they are a part of the reproductive structure of this organism now they have true nucleus and cell wall that is made of chitin 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 c h i t i n all right it's very important to note that bit how well are we doing we have covered bacteria so far we have covered fungi so far is it time for another short quiz ask your teacher and then let's go welcome back i hope you did well in that quiz now we're going to be looking at the virus now viruses are infectious particles look at this word particles we are not saying that it is an organism here because it is not a true organism uh it's one of those mo uh, most complex thing in biology if you ask me a virus is an infectious particle that cannot exist unless they are in an organism that's the only way they can exist they really don't exist on their own um very tricky thing to explain but that's what the literature is saying now they are smaller than bacteria we need to know that that they are really really small they are much smaller than bacteria they are also responsible for many disease many diseases and even death sad to say but it is true now virus are not able we said earlier to exist by themselves they do not have organized cell structure like other organisms the virus particle consists of dna that is d ribonucleic acid and it also consists of ribonucleic acid in a capsid now the virus also comes in different shape uh, if you watch our other video we spoke about the amoeba we say you could take a photo of the amoeba this morning and you have a different photo this evening so here we have the protein outer coat there uh, if you're looking at the screen here the protein outer coat right here and uh, we have the capsid we spoke about in the content just now and then we have what is called a viral envelope you need to know these diagrams you need to be able to identify them in an examination and uh, we have the nuclear strand here or the nucleic strand right here you need to know the diagrams that we have presented so far we have looked at the virus we have looked at the fungi and we have looked at the bacteria now please make sure that you take some time out to probably go to the internet or look in your textbook to see if there's any other representation to these diagrams so that having seen them or if you were supposed to see them in the examination it would be like a walk in the park i hope that we are doing well i hope that we are following i hope that we are understanding even the language because i know i am reaching out to persons in different caribbean islands i'm from jamaica so there might be a little challenge with the accent but if i'm going too fast if you're not understanding please feel free to leave me a comment and we will do as best as we can to ensure that we are reaching you as well so we have just looked at the virus and we want to look at some keyword to identify now to identify is to establish or tell what someone something or place is you want to identify like an identification parade so i want you to identify the date christmas is celebrated now the answer here most persons say well that is very easy probably if you celebrate a christian holiday it is december 25th identify as simple as that just to give the answer give us the answer don't tend to write any fluff and buff 
just to give the answer it's just to identify so look at this question we want you to identify the smallest in size of the following organisms let's look at them a bacteria b fungi c virus and d protozoa to most of us protozoa is a new term to most of us protozoa is a new term the content did say that um bacteria it's much larger than the fungi so our answer here is going to be ding dong ding dong ding dong ding dong perfect c virus is the smallest of the group of organisms here now i want you to suggest and to suggest is to put forward a thought that is supported by scientific facts not any folklore but scientific facts so do you are suggesting something you want to ensure that your suggestion is rooted with scientific facts we really don't want any confirmational bias all right we want facts so let's look at this question we want you to suggest the economic importance of knowing about fungi why is it important to know about fungi now so much can be said feel free to go through this video again and try to answer this question to score full marks you want to look at the economic importance as it relates to some good and of course some bad all right let's move right along we want to compare the movement of the bacteria to the virus all right so use as much support as you can this video some other video but make sure that you are getting a full understanding of what we expect you to do all right question using diagram we want you to compare plant cell animal cell fungi bacteria and it's not here but of course the virus we want you to just draw this diagram if you can get a piece of tape and you can just tape the paper together uh, so you'll be drawing the plant cell then the animal cell then the fungi then the bacteria then the virus draw them use a piece of tape tape down the middle so that you have something like a foldable uh, book what is it called again uh, something foldable I don't remember the name and you are able to open it out or open it and at a glance you can say this is this and that is that it's always good to have pictorial representation of these things I can assure you if you do that when you get to the exam you won't be buckle shuffling around to I wonder which one this is or I wonder which one that is you would have known remember you can go over this video however many times you so desire now here we have an activity for the road one would say I want you to make a list of words list of words explained and see how many of them your friends actually know I want you to play this digital game whether you are going to be using TikTok or you're going to be using WhatsApp or you're going to be using some one of those social media platform just to find out from your friend do you understand what's the expectation when you see this word on an exam and let us know in the comment section how it went all right so our next lesson is going to be cell specialization and that is coming out this week this week we took a break from posting since last friday but we are back here with you and will be with you right until the end of your examination we'll be giving you some past paper questions some exam tips and all of that as we go through the weeks to our exam remember you're doing hsb so your hsb paper will be having a new component for those persons i think sit in the exam 2021 
and beyond. So we want to ensure that we understand that. I am going to be bringing that bit in some of our content so that you understand what the expectations are. Now do remember to like, share, subscribe and of course hit that notification bell when you subscribe and I want you to leave us a comment in the comment section below. Remember to check out Mr. Chen's teaching if you are an agriculture student. Until next time, what good?